Hello YouTube, Devor here again, and uh, after having a little bit of coffee, decided that I'm going to film the 1.4 task from the Mathematics Vision Project Math 3 textbook. This is the last of the module one tasks that I'm actually going to film. There is a 1.5 task, but that one is actually best left for you to do as a student instead of me showing you how to do it. This is the last kind of notes type task in module one. Starts out with a magic trick. Now there are a lot of these kinds of magic number tricks. This is the one they chose. So you pick a number, you add six to it, multiply the result by two, subtract 12, divide by two, and you get the answer of what you started with. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out a sheet of paper here, and we're gonna go through and actually show the steps of this magic trick. So let's say x equals two, just for convenience sake. So two is our number. Uh, we start, so our first step, we start with two. We add six, which equals eight. We multiply that result times two, which is 16. We subtract 12, minus 12 equals 4, then we divide it by 2, and we end up with what we started with. Now, I'm going to kind of see what happens if we were to maybe make a new number trick, but now we're going to do our steps in reverse. We're going to start with our output, which is 2. So there's our step number one. And then as I go through, I'm just going to start undoing things. So instead of dividing by two, my first step is I am going to multiply by two. Instead of subtracting 12, I am going to add 12. Instead of dividing by two, I am, instead of timesing by two, I'm going to divide by two. And then instead of adding six, I'm going to subtract six. And this is going to give me my original number out, which was two. Now, why did I bring this up? Why did I go ahead and do this in reverse? Well, this is the kind of the crux of what the task is about. The task is about starting with a function and then inverting it so that you can take what, what was the output of your original function, put it back through and, you know, showing that inverse relationship. Let's do this one with, with an act with X's as opposed to two. So we start out with our number. So this is F of X right here. We start out with our number. We add six, multiply the whole thing by two subtract 12 and divide by 2. And then if we go in the opposite order, we start with our number, we multiply it by 2, we add 12, we divide it by 2, and then subtract 6. So see, they look very different, but you start seeing some of these undoing things in the order that they were originally done here, kind of in that exact opposite order. And this is the process that I want you to think about as we go through this particular task. I like this task. Um, I do, however, feel that the formatting, the way they want you to do it is sometimes a little funky. So that's why we're going through this together. Okay, so here... Here's how they want you to do it. We're going to do this with another function. So here we have our input is seven. We put it through the function x plus eight, which means that we take our input and we add eight to it. Seven plus eight is 15. Now, here's the part that I don't really care for as much. This 15, we want it to go into our inverse function. So we have inverse function of 15 
And basically, we, we want to, we're going to plug this in. We get 15 minus 8 equals 7. That's what we want. We want to be able to undo our first function to get our original output. That's the idea. So instead of adding 8, I'm going to subtract 8. Let's do, let's do these guys together so you can get a better idea. Okay, so we start out again with 7. Now our function rule is we multiply by 3. So 3 times 7 equals 21. Now if I want to undo multiplying by 3, I am going to divide by 3. I'm going to take my input, I'm going to divide it by 3, so 21 divided by 3 will give me 7. In words, we divide by 3. Instead of multiplying, we're dividing. Okay, so here's our next one. Our input is 7. Our rule is we square our input. So 7 squared equals 49. If I want to undo a square root, if I want to undo a square, sorry, I am going to take the square root of it. Now remember, this 49 is going to go right in there. Square root of 49 is 7. So in words, we take the square root. All right, here's one that's a little trickier, and this comes from a notation that you saw in, uh, in another one of these uh, Ready, Set, Goes. Just as a reminder, um, we did something with exponents. We were able to rewrite them. For instance, if we have um, 2 to the third equals 8, just a pretty standard exponential equation, we have another way of writing it using what's called logarithms. So log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Now, if, if you don't have a lot of experience with logarithms, I might do another video just about this notation because it's really important. Basically, the, que the, the question that we ask is a little different. In this first version, we have 2 to the third power is what? That's really what we're asking. For logarithms, we say I have two, my I have I'm taking two to a power, two to what power will give me eight? And the answer is three. So your answer is actually the exponent. Okay, so we can we can use basically what this means is that we now have a inverse function for things that are in exponential notation. Okay, so here's our input. We have x equals seven. Our rule is we take two to our input power. So 2 to the 7th equals 128. Now, once again, our input is going to go right here. And the way this ends up working is that I'm taking 2, 2 to what power will give me 128? So we'd write that as log base 2 of our input, which in this case is 128, and that's going to pop out 7. We're going to do a lot more of this. So we take the logarithm. That's that's what this is called. This is logarithmic notation. And uh, if if I see that people are struggling with this, I might go ahead and put up a video about logarithms, just because it's what module two is all about, and it's really important. Logarithms are actually really important, just in mathematics. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to number four. This one's a little trickier. We have two rules going on here. We have, let's see, we have x equals 7. Our function is 2x minus 5. What this really means is we take our input, we multiply it by 2, and then we subtract 5. So we're going to need to do some, we, we're going to need to take it apart step by step, just like we did during, uh, with, the, with the number game. And remember that we're basically going to go from the outside in. We're going to do our, we're going to take the steps exactly in reverse. So what this means is that we're going to start with a number with our input. We're going to add 5, because that was the last step that we did to it, and then divide by 2. So in words, we add 5, divide by 2, like that. And we, we, can, we can check that. We can say... Um, So 
7 plus 5 is 12 divided by 2 is, well, oh, sorry, 9 plus 5. Whew, I made the cardinal mistake. If this helps, please do it. <laughs> 9 plus 5 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. Whew, okay, very nearly had a heart attack there. Thought that this was not going to work out, and I was trying to figure out why. It's because I was using the wrong input. So keep that in mind. Don't do, don't do that. Okay, number five. Oh, we've got more rules here. So it looks like our rule is we add five and then divide by three. Which means, again, we're going to take this in reverse. Instead of dividing by three, so we're going to divide, we're going to, instead of, instead of dividing by three, we're going to multiply by three and then subtract five. So multiply by three and then uh, subtract five. There we go. And again, we're going to take this four, pop it in here. We end up with three times four is 12, minus five is seven. Always worth it to check your work. Okay, here's our next one. We have x minus three squared. So we subtract three and then square the result which to me means that we are going to take our input, we're going to take the square root first and then add three. Because we're doing it once again in the opposite order of how it was done in the first place. Square root and then add three. Okay, and we can, once again, the 16 is gonna go here. Square root of 16 is four plus three gives us seven. So it works out. All right, I think we have one more page of these. Yep, we don't have much more of these. Okay, my input is seven. Ooh, so we, let's just write down the steps here. We square root it, make it negative, and then add four. Those are kind of the steps. So once again, we're gonna take these in reverse. So we're going to add four, make it negative, and then square it. Okay, that's pretty cool actually. So here's our, we're gonna add four. We're gonna make the whole thing negative. And when we square it, oh, that's actually, that's not gonna matter once we square it. That's pretty interesting, actually. Oh, this needs to be a subtract four, doesn't it? Yep, subtract four, there we go. Okay, so it's gonna be x minus four squared is what we end up with. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. So we, Subtract four, change sign, square. And then finally, ooh, this one's a fun one. It's gonna combine some logarithm type things. So our rule is we take two to a power minus 10. So two to the x power minus 10 which means that we are going to take our, um, let me double check here. Ah, so we're going to add 10 first, because, so we're gonna add 10 to our input, and then we're going to take the logarithm, base two of that. What you end up with, when we pop this guy in, is you end up with log base two of 128, which gives us seven. So add 10, and then we take the logarithm to undo the two to the x power. Okay, here are kind of our definition things. Each of these problems began with x equals seven. What is the difference between the x used in f of x and the x used in, f, in uh, inverse f of x? The difference is, is 
the, the x that's used here, this is the output of f of x when x equals 7. And when we plug in that output, we should get 7 back. That's, you know, part of our inverse functions. All right, so it's asking in number 6, could any value of x be used for f of x and still give the same output? What about in number 7? Let's look back at number 6 here. Okay, so for number 6, what it's really asking is can are, can we use any possible input here? And the answer is no. Um, this needs to be positive, strictly positive. Um, ah, and it's also asking about in here. Basically, is it possible that we could put in another number in here and still get 16 as an answer? Now, 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 squared is 16. What if we... What if we wanted this part in here to be negative 4? Well, my answer would then be if we put a negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 would give us negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 gives us 16. So you could, there's two different possibilities here. So x could be negative 1. And still have the same input in but but because this is still 16 this is still going our default answer is still going to be 7 the reason why we're not going to get negative 1 is because we can never get a neg we can never get a negative number out of this inverse function because this will always give us a positive number we can't get a negative number out of this guy so we'll never actually get this input out. But we can never get um, negative 1 as an output. And, and the same could be said as well of number seven and it's actually just thinking about the inputs because once again we can't have negative inputs so our domain is a bit more restricted but this part is not as restricted we can technically put negative numbers in here and it's okay just thinking about it by itself as a function so there's some there's some weird stuff when you start getting square roots there's some restrictions that you kind of have to put on your numbers in order to make it work okay Based on your work in this tasks and the other tasks in this module, what relationships do you see between functions and their inverses? Um, the major things that you need to know, the domain and range are switched. And sometimes you need to restrict the domain of f of x so that it can be invertible. Okay, we saw this I think in 1.2, so this is kind of hearkening back to something that we've already talked about. All right, well that was a really easy, straightforward task. Uh, in the Ready, Set, Go, you're going to be asked to do a lot more of this switching between these different kinds of functions, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you have any questions about going between inverse functions, about domain and range, things like that, please do not hesitate to send me an email, and I will once again be happy to help. Uh, this is the 1.4 task, pulling a rabbit out of a hat from the Mathematics Vision Project Math 3 textbook. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.